But one thing I will tell you will be a lie, but I won't tell you which one it is. <laughs> There's an amazing book that just came out a couple of months ago that's called Illegal Living. Illegal Living, and it, and it sort of focuses on uh, what happened in Soho when this place was, was first developed. I mean, Jonas Minkus was already doing things before that. He was doing Cinematech shows in his loft and in various other places. And then at one point, uh, this guy, George McCunis, who's kind of like the organizer of this group called Fluxus, he, he's the person who's responsible for Soho being a, a, you know, a place where artists do, because artists, Soho before that was mostly just like factories and things like that, and people weren't really living there. Mm -hmm. And so McCunis, he got some property you know, some old like warehouses and then he, you know, started converting them into places where artists could use them in studios. And he was friends with, with Jonas Mikas, who started this place. And so the very first sort of like official place that Anthology had was a was an old factory building in Soho that came through this George McCunis. But originally, these weren't places that were uh, that people were supposed to live in. You know, because sometimes, you know, like people are living in, not exactly squatting, but they're actually living in places that aren't zoned for living, right? Or you know, they aren't zoned for, for doing performances or films, that, you know, art them. Or, or they aren't zoned for being studios. Right? And so, people just do that. You know, people often will just start living somewhere and then maybe at some point, you know, they get busted for it. Says, you can't do that here. You can't have a studio. You can't have a. You can't live here. But so anyway, the anthology started in a place that was in, in Wooster Street in, in Soho. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's this whole book that came out. Uh, the anthology actually sells this book. It's a book called Illegal Living. And so it tells this big story, this big background story, you know, mm -hmm. from the 60s into the 70s about how artists started living in factories and started using them in studios and then started using them as spaces like this where they showed films. So they started showing films there originally. You know, it was just like a big old empty, you know, sort of loft like space. You know. And then so Andalus, this space came much later. Like this this building, you know, was an old courthouse. And it was an old uh, I can't jail. That's why you see bars in the windows because actually really? it was yeah, they would you know take people in court and then they'd so I guess keep them overnight, you know, in jail. It oh, turns out that Jonas and his brother at one point, I think in the fifties actually had to come here for court work on Like this is called the courthouse theater because it actually was a courthouse, even though it's been transformed into a movie theater. But it was actually an old courthouse, so yeah. that's why it's called the courthouse theater. And so it took like a, almost a decade to turn this building into this, this movie theater. You know, and, uh, so, um, you know, there's two theaters in here. There's this is the bigger theater, and then there's a smaller one downstairs that's named after Maya Darren. She's kind of a you know, inspiration, patron of the anthology. So, uh, you know, anthology was always doing, I mean, they were kind of officially doing stuff since I think around 1970. So, you know, they've been doing stuff for more than 40 years. Yeah, but they've been in this building, I think, since 88, 89. <laughs> so do you like I make film? experimental films to convince people that, that film is not good. So that's because most oh, people really? don't like experimental films. No, I'm <laughs> 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 people don't like experimental films. So if you make experimental films, they'll make people like hate films. You know, so. <laughs> good. I like but experiments. I, I actually like, I, to this day, I still like things that I, I don't know how they're going to turn out. You know, I like real experiment. I mean, some, some people don't like the term. Some some experimental filmmakers or personal avant-garde independent filmmakers, they don't like the term experimental. Yeah. They're like, we're not making experiments. We're making beautiful paintings, or we're we know what we're making. You know, or you know, we're just making something different, more like poetry than like prose. You know, but I like the, the idea of experimental films. You know, where you start working on a project and you don't know the outcome of it. It's very much like a kind of laboratory. You know, where mm. you're actually experimenting. You know, things might blow up, you know, things might not turn out, things might turn into something different, you know, it's like, you know, so a real experiment to me, it, it, not just in making a fixed, you know, like a finished film, but also in terms of doing something with film, you know, that might be live, you know, might do a film performance or something, where each time it's different, you know, or maybe there's different kinds of collaborations, you know, 
different combinations of, of films and different kinds of projections in which, oh, I'm going to try this today. I'm going to try to make a film with no film. You know, mm -hmm. how would I do that? You know, would I have a soundtrack? Do I just need light? Do I need something that flickers? You know, what would make it a film exactly in people's minds? Mm -hmm. okay, I think anthology, I swear that anthology has the broadest different kinds of film of any place in the world. You know, some people would say, oh, the Museum of Modern Art shows pretty wide amounts. Yes, they do, but they don't really show 8 millimeter home movies. Mm. You know, they don't show people putting plastic in the projector, you know. Mm. They don't show slides, you know. They don't, I mean, they don't tend to show, you know, things that are really that different. I mean, they show many fixed things that are, you know. Do you have normal theme? At Anthology, we have, you know, we, we last, just last week we were showing, like, Hitchcock. John Ford, you know, we show Hollywood films, we show old films, we show films from the entire history. So it's not just history. about experimental. No, the thing about experimental film is that that's kind of the heart and soul. It's kind of the basis of mm -hmm. what anthology started with. It started with, you know, and even even among that, there were things like Citizen Kane and Rules of the Gay and then, you know some other classic, you know, American and you know, European and you know, Ozu. I mean, there were films from all over that were part of the original collection. But I think the primary focus of it was. You know, kind of starting with the French and German, you know, experimental things from the 20s and moving up into the new American cinema with Maya Darren and Brackage and other people you know, in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And so it kind of concentrated itself in the films from like the 40s into the early 70s. And that became the basis of what anthology collected and originally preserved. But I think... Uh, I think, again, anthology has the broadest possible audience. I mean, there are certainly people who do their homework and are scholars and are students and, you know, who, who, who think that a film experience would be richer if they actually knew something beforehand and they, you know, read about it and, and did some research on it and, you know, would like to come see something over and over again, you know, and so there's the possibility that the things in the archive or that's in the central cinema we're going to show and cycle every year, you know, and you can come back and study them. You know, and so that, that's a really hardcore audience, a very dedicated audience. And most of those people probably become members of Anthology because you can see the Essential Cinema for free if you're a member. So you could buy a membership for a year and see, you know, dozens and dozens of films that are in that collection. And so that's... Um, you know, I mean, my experience, which is probably yours too, is that you see stuff on the internet and it's, it's, it's surprising what things that you may have never thought would be popular could be popular on YouTube, you know, or that, you know, even even if it's something with just like, you know, flashing color, you know, or something that, that seems very personal, extremely personal. I mean, especially extremely personal. I mean, a lot of experimental film, you know, came out, it's often for many people it's thought of as diaristic film or very personal film, you know, and it's telling a kind of a point of view or, or sort of shooting in a kind of point of view that seems incredibly intimate and incredibly personal. And, you know, you might think, you know, many people over the years thought, oh, who would care about that kind of film? Mm -hmm. You know, we want, we want bigger stories. We want, sto you know, something yes. that seems like it's pitched to a much broader audience. And yet, if you, look at, if you look at the Internet, it's like, you know, thousands of people, millions of people are interested in the most personal things, the most intimate things. And people nowadays are exchanging these kind of things by shooting, you know, their, their own kind of work, having their own sites, having their own blogs, you know, and things like that, where... Mm -hmm. You can see that what some seemingly the most intimate thing seems to be interesting to many, many people, and like, and those are people. I don't know what a normal person is. No. I mean, like, um, um, like me. Oh, uh, you don't seem very normal. No, no. <laughs> I'm not normal. Okay. <laughs> Wait, turn the camera around just for a second. <laughs> I'm not normal. I'm not normal. Yeah. No, I mean, no people can submit. I mean, like, if there's two, there's two kind of things. One is the new filmmakers, in which anyone can submit work, you know, short or long. And then anthology has its own, has its own curator. So, you know, and anthology, like I said, could be interested in anything. You know, really mm. know, you know what, what they might be. So. so I can just, if I want to submit like my work, I can just come here and talk to someone. And then... you could drop it off. There's various curators here who do. Oh, who, I who, see. Who do, there's curators who do. You know. oh, I mean, that guy Barney who's downstairs. He. He's, he and Bill are the curators of the new filmmakers, so I, do, I think there is a fee um, for them. I don't, you know, but, I but it is, you know, to use, to be able to show in these theaters, it's, it's much cheaper than probably almost any other place, mm -hmm. even if there is a fee. Mm -hmm. And anthology as well, I mean, people could drop things off and say, you know, Oh, very nice. Uh,
Yeah. Yeah. Good.